Welcome. I'm Stuart Rosenthal, and I'm happy to present to you today's Meaningful to Feel the Project program. We are fortunate this time to have four sponsors of this program. We do appreciate the support of our sponsors. They are Debbie and Max Rudman, the Severe family, both to commemorate the 11th yard site of Eitan Severe, Eitan ben David Zechel Bracha, and in honor of Rabbi Rosenbaum, in gratitude for all he does for our community and our family. Also by also Miriam by and Jeff Zuckerman, in grateful appreciation of Rabbi Rosenbaum, who works 25 7, and they meant to say that. His responsiveness, thoughtfulness, and gracious patience throughout the time of our father's illness and death was and is very much appreciated. May I Baruch Hu continue to bless him and his family with good health and haslacha and all their endeavors. And finally, I would like to add that Judy and I, my wife, are also sponsoring today's program in memory of my mother, Chaya Bat Baruch, to commemorate her 10th yard site on the 8th of Av. Over the past 10 years, the Minifil Tefila Project has presented many programs that delve into the ways we can improve our kavanah, our intention, in davening. Today, we look at what it's like to pray when life gives us lemons. When we face tough times in life, either in terms of our own personal troubles and losses, or regarding communal tragedies like those all Jews are now living through, we might experience one of two different reactions. One person might find experiencing tragedies makes it easier to pray to Hashem with all their heart, while another finds themselves numbed by the enormity of the loss and unable to focus at all on their prayers, perhaps thinking God isn't even listening. I welcome Rabbi Rosenbaum of Yang Israel Muna and thank him for his willingness to address this topic today and to help us see how life's challenges, both personal and communal, can give us a sharper focus in our prayers and help us strengthen our relationship with Hashem at the same time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank you very much, Stuart, as always, for organizing this. Thank you. Uh, thank you to all of the sponsors, especially the kind dedications. I also just want to mention it helps to have uh, friends in, in positions of authority. My parents also attended the sponsor today. There must have been a, a disconnect somewhere. I, I believe it to commemorate my grandfather's yard site, uh, Mr. Jack Manns, Colonel Rocha Yaakov Moshe, and Yechiel Halevi. So thank you to, to them as well. Okay, you walk behind um, my car. and Stuart, thank you for the very uh, specific questions you posed. I, I think that, that is where I want to go, but I just, a little bit of a disclaimer at the beginning, um, I'll tell you what we're not going to talk about. Uh, what we're not going to talk about is why uh, bad things happen to good people. There are approaches to this, it's a very important discussion, but it, it, it's really a different discussion. Uh, let's just assume, for the sake of this discussion, that it's always possible that it's just a test. It's it's possible that it's not a message that we need to be better in any way. It could just be a test. It could be a blessing in disguise. But, and this is what we're going to touch on a lot today, it could be that the difficulties in a person's life are an opportunity to repent and to pray. Um, and... This is what we're going to focus on. Now, the obvious question is, so how do you know which one it is? How do you know if I'm supposed to be davening slash repenting or I should just, you know, do my best because it's just a test? And the answer is we don't have the foggiest idea and we'll never have the foggiest idea. So we're best served by covering our bases. And uh, obviously, if we think there are ways, and this is certainly reflected in the Gemara, if we think there are ways that we can improve ourselves, we should do so. Worst comes to worst. If that's not the reason we have the experience, we will have improved ourselves. And same thing with prayer. So now that I discussed what we're not discussing, I just if I could follow up on, on Stuart's introduction, maybe a drop more specific, two very fair questions that a person could pose regarding prayer if, if a person is experiencing difficulties or if a person, as we all are looking at national challenges, one question is, didn't God just reject me? If I'm having this difficulty, wasn't this a little bit of a sign that God's not happy with me? Sorry to say it in such a stark way, but I think sometimes we feel that way. And if indeed God's not happy with me, what makes me think he wants to talk to me? I'm not saying that's necessarily correct, but I think that that's the emotion that we have sometimes. Um, and the second thing is, and I think maybe this is an even more compelling question for people, 
think about how we define insanity. So, you know, I'm having whatever difficulty. I davened once, I davened twice, I davened three times, and it didn't change. So why should I think I should keep on davening? How do, how do we look at that? So I, this is really what I'd like to focus on today. Um, I, I want to apologize ahead of time. We're going to be a little bit, maybe a little more philosophical than I normally am. Uh, it, 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 it might feel a little bit lofty at times. I assure you it's not that I'm lofty. It's that I just found quotes from lofty people. Um, but I, I think it's worthwhile things to think about. And it could be that some of us will be able to connect to all of the points raised. It could be that some of us will be able to connect to some of the points raised, but I hope it'll be helpful in one way or another. Okay. Um, as a little bit of an introduction, if you're if you're on Zoom or if you're in person, uh, we really will be working off of this uh, handout. I, I, I believe it's in the chat box on the Zoom. Thank you, Menasha. Thank you very much, as always. Thank you. Okay, so what's the what's the source for the mitzvah of tefillah? What does God want from me in terms of davening? The question that we posed sort of implies that I need to daven regularly, but maybe when things are tough, maybe maybe I'm exempt from davening because things are so hard. So there's a famous, famous dispute between the Rambam and the Ramban that speaks to this in a very meaningful way. So the first source here is from the Rambam, Maimonides. The Rambam is listing off mitzvos. And early on in his count, he says, Hu shetzivanu la'avdo. God commands us to serve him. Ukvar nichpal ze'at sivui pamayim. Different places in the Torah talks about the charge to serve God. What does it mean to serve God? The Rambam says, In many respects, this is a broad instruction. Serve God. Do what he wants. Do the mitzvot. That's what it sounds like. There is a specific statement being made in the mitzvah to serve Hashem, shehu tzivui l'tfila. The Rambam says that when it says in the Torah where we have a mitzvah to serve Hashem, it means davintim. And this is a Torah mitzvah of prayer coming upon each of us. That's the Rambam's idea. The Ramban says something very different. For those of you familiar, it's not at all a novelty for Maimonides and Nachmanides to disagree. This is another example. Second source here. The, the Ramban cites a source, the, uh, a Midrashic source, that what it means to serve God is to study his Torah or to daven to him. Asmachtahi. This is just a hint from the Torah. It's not really a core mitzvah, says the Ramban. Olomar Or the message is the part of serving God, Shenilmod Toraso. A fascinating thing. The position of the Ramban is the Torah mitzvah of prayer is specifically when things aren't going well for us. Specifically when things are not going well for us. Person, thank God, things are going smoothly in a person's life. A person gets up, wants to daven. The Ramban would tell you that's very nice. You're following a rabbinic directive. It's a good thing to daven every day. But the Ramban would say that God didn't command us in the Torah to daven every day. He would encourage you to do it. But the Ramban would say that specifically when a person is having difficulties or our nation is having difficulties, specifically at that moment, even though that might be the time where it's very difficult to daven, that's when there's a Torah mitzvah to daven. A very interesting thing to think about. Viti, I'm on the third line now of the Ramban. Viti yena eneinu v'libeinu a love that our hearts and eyes should turn to God like servants to their master. He says, this is a pasuk in the Torah. When you go to a war in your land, on, on, uh, on a nation that looks to afflict you, to cause you distress, you should blow the trumpets. This is a specific mitzvah in the Torah of, of Klal Yisrael having these trumpets that are to arouse people's inspirations at unique times. 
and then you'll be remembered before God. And clearly the intent of the Pasuk is not that it's just some magic tool, a trumpet, and the idea is the trumpet is supposed to arouse people in prayer. The, the, that Pasuk is a very poignant Pasuk to, to read in this context when we talk about war in your land. The mitzvah al-tzara, shetavu al the Ramban says, this is a Torah directive. When the nation has a difficulty, lizo klefanov, to cry out before him, betfilo betruah, with prayer, and when it's appropriate in context, the blowing of horns. And this is what Shlomo Melech spoke about. If you if you turn the page, this is only an excerpt. If you're curious, you can look at, at a, you can look it up. When Shlomo HaMelech, Solomon, celebrates the building of the first base of Mikdash, there's a remarkable speech that he gives to Cloud Israel. And it's 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 again it's much longer than what we have here, but we'll just pick up from where the Ramban quotes it, and his point is that there are these are great things that can happen since we have a base of mikdash since we have a temple that's a special place of connecting to God through service and prayer. Now he's going to talk about what Bnei Israel can do in the temple. He doesn't mean that you can only do this in the temple. We don't have a temple today, but the point is that these tefillos are all the more meaningful in a temple. Shlomo HaMelech says, Be'otzer shomayim, below matar. When rain stops, ki because the Jewish people have sinned to you, v'spalu el hamakom hazeh, they will come to Davin in this place, the base of Mikdash. V'odu eshmecha, they will recognize you. U'mechat asam yeshuvun, and they will repent. Ki sa'anem, because you're answering them. You will hear their prayers in the heavens. And you will for, forgive the sins of the Jewish people. You'll teach them the right path they should go upon, meaning they will have gotten the message. If the Jewish people have a problem of drought, they'll be moved to repent and they'll daven to you. And since they repented and they daven to you, you'll bring rain on their land, this land that you gave the Jewish people as an inheritance. Verse 37, when there's famine in the land, when there's plague in the land, all kinds of things that could uh, affect the crops. Or the enemy presents itself in the gates, konega, komachala, all types of illness, all types of wounds, so many different problems. Verse 38, kotvila kotrina, ashertia l'chol adam, any prayer, any supplication that a person has, l'chol amcha Yisrael, to all of your nation Israel, asher yedun ish nega levavo. Each person knows the weaknesses in their own heart. Each person knows the shortcomings in their own heart. My tefillah isn't the same as your tefillah. But a person comes to the base of Mikdash, and he extends his hands towards this house. Verse 39, All these examples, you'll hear the prayers, you who reside in the heavens. You'll forgive. And you'll Conduct yourself towards any given person in whatever is appropriate. You know best, God. Because you alone know the hearts of men. Verse 40. So that the Jewish people will have reverence for you all of the days. So the Ramban says, if you just see, again, this small excerpt, so much of Shlomo Melech's description of what it is to connect to God through prayer is when things are not going well. The Ramban says that's the core of what prayer is about. So we could theoretically uh, end here, and then I guess all of the donors would ask for a refund, whatever. Um, so I guess the answer is we should stop fetching and uh, we should just dive in because the Ramban says that's what it's all about. And you know the Ramban wouldn't say we shouldn't dive in. He just says it's not all what it's all about. But now the obvious question is, so how are we to relate to it? We understand intellectually, perhaps, but emotionally, how are we to relate to this? And just to frame it differently, 
So why would God be doing this to me? And if God is doing this to me, and it's because he wants me to dive in, what does he really want from me? What is he, what's his goal? Why, why, why would he be pushing me to dive in? If, that, if that's making sense. So there's an interesting quote here from Sichos Musar. Sichos Musar, some of you have probably heard of him, uh, Rav Chaim Shmulevet, Zichron Levracha. He was a, a prominent personality in the Mir Yeshiva. Um, he was, uh, there are there are famous, famous stories with him uh, exhorting the, the his students in Yeshiva to, to, Davin in a very emotionally emotional way and to connect to everyone fighting for Israel during the the, the wars in the, in the history of Israel um just to give you a sense he like many others uh was on the run during World War II he experienced a good amount of difficulties in his life so this is an excerpt from a much larger piece he says yachid otzibur ashruin betzara if an individual finds themselves, finds oneself dealing with a tragedy, or a nation or a community finds themselves dealing with a calamity, mitzvah leim lahatir betfila. We have a mitzvah to daven, ulahapil tchinasim from borei olamim, and to place our supplications before the Master of the Universe. Ula yishas sheisu elokim biyishmazak asam. Maybe God will hear our cries, bifalti menatzara, and save the. The people from the difficulty. Vinimtes Hatsara Sibas Hatsvila. And it would, if, if you look at it that way, it would mean that the reason why we daven is because of the difficulty. Because people were encountering a difficulty, Hatiru Bitfil of Nekonam, they daven. Many, many times when we daven, I, I think it's fair to say that many of us. It's, it's hard to sustain over such a long time, but hopefully we're davening at least a little bit differently now than we did a year ago. And hopefully we're davening a little bit differently even in these specific days than we did a month ago, hopefully. We, we react. that that That's how we are as, as, as people who believe that our prayers make a difference. We daven that God should answer our prayers. But now, in the next paragraph, he says, We find sometimes the other way around. Perhaps the prayer is the cause of the difficulty. What does that mean? I want to be very, very clear. Um, we 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 cannot and we may not say that we understand why things happen. And he's not saying that either. It is not for us to look at anything in our lives and certainly not on a national scale and say, well, I know why this problem is occurring. That's not the way we can look at things. But to at least see it as a possibility to say to ourselves, maybe the reason why this challenge is coming up is maybe God is creating an impetus for me or for us to daven. How will we know? We won't know. But but it, it does give a little bit of a different perspective. And when one thinks this way, one is reflecting on the loftiness of prayer. That maybe God has such desire for prayers. Maybe, maybe a person finds themselves in a difficult situation because God wants their prayers. Maybe. That sounds like a very far out thing to say, but there's a very famous Gemara. Gemara and Yavamos, next source. Amr of Yitzchak. I'm sure many of you have heard of this Gemara before. It's a fascinating thing that if you look at the patriarchs and the matriarchs, almost all of them had, at least in some point in the generation, had difficulty bearing children. 
Why? Why would such a thing be? Gemara says in Kedesh HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Misavel Tfilas and Shel Tzadikim. Because God wants the prayers of the righteous. So this is a very interesting statement. This is, again, it's 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 on a very specific scale, but it's really what Rav Shmuel was talking about, that there's an idea sometimes that people encounter difficulties because God wants their prayers. Now, this is a hard thing to understand. And I think it's more difficult to understand if you're talking about righteous people. You, know, you say to yourself, okay, there's a person who has no connection with God, and God's trying to get through to the person, and God wants the person to... To, to seek him. Maybe, maybe I can relate to that. But, I mean, these people are are, are giants. They're, they're, they're the foundations of a nation. So what? God wants to introduce himself to them? God has a meaningful, they have a meaningful relationship with God. What are we talking about? So it's a very interesting piece here from Rev. Eliyahu Dessler, a micht of Melio. We are going to quote from him extensively throughout. Um, I think he would say he passed away in the 1960s. He also, just, just for the record, uh, he was separated from his family, if I remember correctly. He spent years in a different country than most of his family as a result of the Holocaust. Uh, he also had his share of life's uh, challenges. He says as follows, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, HaMakor HaChesed. God is the source of kindness. Ve'en yotze mimenu el chesed levad. Everything that comes from God is for the good. These are words, we've all heard this before. Sometimes it's hard to wrap the mind around it, but we've certainly heard these words before. All of God's judgments, even if they seem harsh, at their root are, are some aspect of God's kindness. So then what does it mean when we say God wants the, the, the prayers of the righteous? But what does it mean? Does it mean that God just is looking for attention? Like what does what does that even mean? Perusha, sherotza lis chasad imam, bechasad a yoser gadol sheefsher letzayer. God wants to do the greatest of kindnesses to these people. Umalu a chasad azel. What is that kindness? Sheyuchra chatzadik lis palel bedarga amuka yoser. That even if the person is righteous, and even if the person he has a meaningful relationship with God. Davin's in a meaningful way. God wants to bring out more from the person. God wants to have them daven in a deeper sense. And, and, and through deepening their prayer, they'll come to a greater connection to God. I mean, obviously, the patriarchs and matriarchs were close to God before they had difficulty having children. Obviously. Even so, a person can always grow. A great person can always grow. And the fact that they need to daven for these things brought them to a different place. And that's why, and so what it means that God wanted their prayers is God wanted to bring out even more spirituality for them. And now just to think about it for a moment, we're, we're not we're not those people. We're, we're, we're not ever going to be those people. But to think about it for a moment on, on our level, why this is happening in a person's life, who knows? But maybe on some level, this is an opportunity to connect in a more meaningful way to God. That I believe that if I dive in, and with really recognizing that God runs the world, and I, I, I sincerely ask of him to, to improve whatever situation in my life, not only do I believe that that's a merit that things be improved, but maybe I'm actually going to become a greater person from the experience. And, and maybe, just maybe, that's why this is happening to me. Uh, and it, I, I think it, it's it's a whole different it's a whole different way of looking at the prayer experience. I think if a person's having difficulty and they're 
they, as as a believer, they dive into Hashem. I, I think it could be a very painful thing. It's all about how difficult things are going in my life. But if a person is reflecting and they honestly believe that things can become better and that maybe this is actually an opportunity. You know, I'll just give you a muscle. Somebody was talking about my, my broken arm, uh, you know, from, from however many years ago. Probably I've shared this with you. So I, I had regular physical therapy appointments. And uh, as whoever's had physical therapy, you know, you, you go, you do your warm-up exercises, and then you lie down on, on this bed or whatever, cot, whatever it is. And then a person as sweet as a smile as possible, basically tortures you for a span of 10 to 15 minutes. And then, okay. So, so one time um, the regular uh, therapist wasn't available. There was some intern that was available. And um, I try to be low maintenance. I try to be a relatively easy person. Um, the person is doing whatever they're doing to my arm. And there was no torture. There was no pain. There was no discomfort. I finally said something, you know, you'll forgive me. I, I'm not sure you're doing what you're supposed to do. This is, this is, this is feeling great. I mean, this is fine. And, and the person said, well, I guess it's just a sign that you're coming along. I said, could you, could you bring your supervisor over, please? <laughs> you know, so, so the, the therapist and the therapist also, she said the same thing. I said, do me a favor why don't you do what you normally do for a minute and we'll see how it goes. And of course I started being terribly uncomfortable within the minute. So why would I do that to myself? Why, why would I expose myself to, to, to discomfort? The answer is because I thought I was going to get somewhere with it. And I thought I was going to get stronger with it. So it's, it's, it's a decent, I think it's a decent muscle for what we're talking about here. The next page, at the top of it, it has Mikhtav Meliyahu, Chelek Aleph, Tzilo, Shel, Guf. Same, same author of Dessler. He says, Kol makom shalo yikonis bo ha'or yishkon shama choshech. Wherever light does not dwell, there is darkness. V'yesh asher yagia ha'or elav minat stadim. Sometimes Light can come to a place from the side of a guf omed befanov, but there's some body blocking it. love take for or, and the light will not fully impact that spot. Zehud sail, that is shade or a shadow. So whenever you see a shadow, again, I'm I'm facing the room side. I see shadows all over this room, like under every bench, uh, you know, and, and to the sides of people's bodies. So every time you see a shadow, Rav Desler says, what this speaks to is there's a certain spot that the light didn't reach. If there wouldn't be any light, there wouldn't be a shadow. But there's light that comes, but there's but there's various spots that it doesn't reach. He says, you know, imagine even glass. It could be that many times, you know, the light doesn't even fully get through glass, even though we think of it as 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 more or less transparent. Even that creates a little bit of a shadow. The same is true in our service of God. There's a great phrase in the Talmud, Tocho Kabaro. Tocho Kabaro means my inside is like my outside. Now, when we talk about a person who's not Toko Kabaro, what it means that on some level they're um, they're not authentic, you know, not authentic, you know. So you know maybe they seem very pious in one setting, and then when when there's not so many people around, they're not so pious. That that, that type of thing. And so the goal is to be Toko Kabaro. Now, what we mean the goal is to be Toko Kabaro is not that I'm as much of a jerk in front of people as I am at home. What we really mean is, is that Toho Kabaro, that I should elevate my soul, that in my heart of hearts, I have the same views and I have the same beliefs that I would express when I'm talking to other people. That's, he says, in a nutshell, that's what service of God is in this world. That's the goal. That's the mission, that we should elevate our souls, not just... It, the, if we're not doing good things with others, we have a long, long way to go. But even once we're doing good things in the presence of others, we should elevate our souls even when it's not in the presence of others. He says, when we 
talk about purifying ourselves. That's what we mean. That uh, to keep on refining my soul more and more, that these deep beliefs are, are, are one with who I am. Uh, skipping a line or two. The Ramchal, Moshe Chaim Lutzato, writes that God shines his light constantly on all of us. But it's up to us to create appropriate openings for his light. And we're all different. And some of us have blockages in this way, and some of us have blockages in that way. Next paragraph. Avogam HaTzadik HaGadol, Asher Ein Oin Od Chatzitzu Belibo, even a great, a great righteous person that there don't seem to be any blockages in their heart. The cardiologist's dream that there don't seem to be any blockages in their heart and, and the light of truth shines upon the person. We're in this world, this confusing world. And we all have free will. Even such a person, we're all under a certain amount of a shadow. Because none of us, I mean, we're not angels. We can't be. We all have, uh, it's, it's to different people to different degrees, but we all have a certain amount of, of evil is a strong word. We all have a certain amount of lack of goodness within us. So basically, his point is that everybody, everybody, there's room to grow. And the greatest growth is to clarify fundamental truths in my soul, not just in my mind, but in my soul. And the greatest way to clarify fundamental truths in my soul is tefillah, is prayer. Uh, there's a famous, famous idea. I'm sure many people in this beautiful program that Stuart has run all these years have said it, but lehis palel, the verb form of tadavin, it seems on a basic level to be a reflective verb, to do something to myself. Pileel, the, the root of tefillah, pe lamed lamed, is to judge, to view, to assess. Lehit palel is to make myself judge differently, to change my perspective. That's what tefillah really is. We naturally are inclined to assume, the Torah talks about this left and right in the book of Tvarim. We're naturally inclined to assume that it's all me. It's all my powers. It's all my abilities. And then we're inclined to assume it's all about having a good time in this world and enjoying myself. And the more we recognize that God runs the world, the more we're humbled and the more we're motivated to conduct ourselves in a different way, that's the goal of tefillah. And we could all grow in tefillah. So this is the idea that really Rav Dessler is presenting from the Gemara with the, with, with the great pious people, the patriarchs and the matriarchs, that God created challenges for them so that they would have an even greater opportunity to grow. Okay, so like that's all fine and well if you're a patriarch or a matriarch. What about the rest of us? So uh, the next uh, the next page, it's it's a Gemara from Shabbos, Masecha Shabbos. Tana Rabban and the rabbis taught, Misha Chala, if a person was ill, not alamus, heaven forbid, a person is is uh, is experiencing a serious illness, and heaven forbid, might might pass. Omrim lo hisvade. So it's a halach. It's halach. I'm sure many of you have had this experience with with loved ones. Uh, the practice is we we tell a person, okay, maybe it's time for you to say vidui. It's time for you to confess. It's a very difficult thing to know when that should be done, and it's a complicated thing. By the way, it's brought in halacha that when we say a person should do vidui, we should say to them, it could very well be that you'll you'll make it. It could very well be you'll survive. But let's just cover our bases, and we say actually that the repentance could be a merit. For your survival, she gain kolam mumas and misvaden. Because really, anyone who's going to die should really try to repent first. Okay, next. Adam yotzei l'shuk. If a person goes out into the marketplace 
It should be in the person's mind as if he's being handed over to some governmental officer who might not be positively inclined towards him. We'll go through the whole Kabar. Hopefully it'll we'll make some sense out of it. If a person, if a person's head is bothering them, it should be in the person's uh, uh, mind as if they've been uh, imprisoned. Let's say a person fell from their bed. It should, it should be that they've been been taken to the scaffold to be judged. That any person who is taken to be judged, if a person has big advocates, great advocates, they'll be saved, and if not, they won't be saved. Okay, this is all very frightening, this Gemara, yet it sounds whatever. And these are the great advocates for a person. Repentance and good deeds. Even if there are 999 entities advocating the person's guilt, and one is advocating the person's innocence, the person can be saved. Shinemar says in the Pasuk, I believe we say this um, um, when we do kaparos before Yom Kippur. You know, if there's even one angel to advocate for the person, uh, that can be a, a reason they're saved from, from the abyss. Okay. Okay, so first of all, this Gemara is terrifying. I mean, I mean it seems like what the Gemara is saying that whenever a person has any problem whatsoever, they should, who knows what's going to happen to them. And also the Gemara is a little bit difficult because it starts off by saying, oh, well, if you're in danger, you better have big, big things on your side. And then we say, but by the way, even if you just have one little thing, it's fine. So which one is it? So Rav Desli here at the bottom again, Mechtav Melio. Originally, we said that we need these big advocates. So why are we only talking about this just one advocate? Top of the next page. This statement that if a person's not feeling well or person had some kind of accident, they should imagine that they're like being taken up to the scaffold. Let's say a person finds them in a situation that could lead to danger. Could be dangerous, might not be dangerous. Uh, this is a very lofty thing. I'm not sure this is even good for all of us, but I'll, I'll just share with you. I'm going to say it a little bit lighter than how he says it. He says it in a very intense way, but I just want to say it a little bit differently. Imagine any time, let's, let's say a person, let's say a person's taking a flight somewhere. Okay. Is it, is it possible that heaven forbid it could, it could be dangerous for the person? It's possible. That's why we say tefillah sederach when we get on a plane. It's possible. So let's say, for a moment before saying tefillah sederach, a person says to themselves, you know, I'm just in God's world. Who knows what God's plans are? Maybe at this moment I should just say to myself, this is a slightly dangerous situation, a potentially dangerous situation. Let me take this as a motivation to be one step better as a person. If, that, if that's making sense to people. That seems to be basically what he's saying. He's saying something more intense, but I don't want to, I want everyone to be able to sleep tonight. So, uh, but, 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 but that, but the, and, and, and the point is that we're living in God's world. It's actually, it's a very humbling point. Let's say a person's not feeling well. Let's say, let's say a person's, you know, sick for the day, whatever it is. God willing, it's nothing. But is it a terrible thing to just say, you know what? Who knows what happens in this world? Maybe, maybe this is a little bit of a message for me that I have to be 
a little bit different as a person. Maybe, I, I can't emphasize enough, we're not saying that's necessarily what's going on. And, and the point is not that people should have anxiety and think God's out to get them. But the real point here is that we're actually viewing any situation as an opportunity. Maybe God's not trying to hurt me. Maybe God's giving me a little bit of a tap on the shoulder. Hey, be a little bit more thoughtful here. I just want to, again, just as a little bit of a muscle, I know I've shared this with you, some of some of you before, forgive the repetition, please. Back to me in my broken arm. Gosh, if no one had said anything, I probably wouldn't have thought of any of these examples. So it was right. So I, there was a very kind person who would drive me to the various appointments, my, my physical therapy appointments, couldn't drive myself. I was, I was in between things, dependent on someone else. I'm sitting around at my dining room table. It's like a week before Rosh Hashanah. And um, I'm just sitting there doing nothing because I can't, I'm just waiting. So I think to myself, you know, why, why would, why would this happen to me? It was such a freak. I, I just slipped in the shower, not even a good story, you know? And, and so I don't know. It just hit me like a bolt that there was someone who I had been insensitive to in some way a couple of years before. And someone, a third party even said to me, you know, maybe you owe that person an apology. I said, I don't owe that person an apology. I didn't do anything wrong. I don't know. There was something, I was just sitting there and it just hit me. So, you know, I don't know if this is why I had a broken arm or not, but who knows? Maybe this is a little bit of a message. I was so bored that I picked up the phone and called this person. You know, sometimes you apologize to a person. They don't know what you're talking about. This person knew exactly what I was talking about. This, 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 this person. And um, I mean, it had been like at least two years ago. Um, and the person was very appreciative. And the person was very appreciative of my call and the person forgave me. And then I felt so good because it was, it was actually, it was a very good feeling. Then I thought of someone else I had been rude to and I called them and apologized. And they also forgave me. This was great. So, and again, to be very clear, that's not that's not to say that I know I had a broken arm. I have no idea. But we we get to a place of why is why does God hate me? We get to that place. Why is God doing this to me? What does God have against me? Imagine if we can shift it and we can say. What's God trying to message to me? And I don't know if I'll figure it out. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But by the way, if I can't think of anything, I can always tell myself, you know what? Let me dab into Hashem that this gets better. And maybe, maybe, maybe this is the point that God wants to get my attention in a more meaningful way. And if it's not the point, I still dab in that things should get better. I hope this is making some sense. Um, I want to, I want to jump ahead. Um, the next page, there's a Tehillim, Kuf Yud Ches, right in the middle of the next page. This is from Halal. just want to read a few psukim and then see what Rav Desler says about it. And then I'll be happy to, to end for uh, if there's any comments. Minametar Karasika. I called out to God from the strait. Anani Vamerchavka. Answer me in a broad way, God. Hashem li lo irab. God is for me. God is with me. I will not fear. Maya seli adam. What will anyone do to me? What could anyone do to me? Hashem li roy. God is with me in my assistance. Vani arev so And I will see that things will go poorly for my enemies. Tov lachasos b'ashem ibtoch b'adam. It's better to yearn for God, to look to God, than to have faith in people. Okay, I want to very quickly share with you what Rav Desla says over here. There's a mem mem at the top of the page. Because one finds themselves in this narrow, constraining situation, a person finds the possibility to call out to God. 
I don't know about any of you. What I normally think when I read that pasuk, man, I made Sarkarasi call that from the narrow I call out to God is, you know, I'm in this tight spot. Hashem, could you give me a hand? That's fine. What he's saying is, I'm moved to call out to God. I'm able to call out to God in this meaningful way because I've been in this tight spot. I'm utilizing the opportunity to call out to God in a way that I wouldn't have been able to before. How do we reach this recognizing God's light? Specifically from the narrow. What does it mean that God answers me in a broad way? So the straightforward meaning in the verse is, he got me out of my tight spot. But he's saying, I was in this tight spot and God gives me such, God has broadened my horizons. I've become a different person because of my experience and my prayers. Buzz, once I have that new perspective, Hashem li lo ira, then I'm with God. I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to worry what people will do to me. Because if I'm more meaningfully connected to God, then I have everything I need because I have God. If I have a meaningful connection with God, what really, what really can a person do to me? Unfortunately, this is this is this is something. It's so sad. We're we're, we're touched by it so often, and we shouldn't have any any more stories like this. But how many people in the past months have left this world? At, at a moment of of tremendous rising to the occasion, there, there's one of the one of the placards up. Uh, Roy Weiser, uh, you know, they, he 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 gave up his life to save other chayalim. That's how he left this world. What a beautiful thing, and what a terrible tragedy! What a terrible tragedy! But you know, imagine a person is 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 living on a spiritual plane, so. I, so I'll go on to the next world. Again, it's very difficult. It's very painful. I, I'm not belittling it at all. But this is what he's talking about. He's saying a person reaches a certain level of spirituality. I, It's me and God. What can people do to me already? And there's so many stories like this from the Holocaust, of course. Accounts, remarkable things that people said. Remarkable moments. Again, we don't we don't want any such situations. Let it let it be stories of the past, but but to reflect on. I want to jump ahead to the middle of the page, and then we'll we'll stop for comments. If a person wants to channel these challenges, to take one to a place of of holding on to a, a loftier perspective. To really attain uh, the revelation of, 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 of God in this world, person should focus on three things. Again, for whatever, however, whatever we can do with this, far easier said than done. Aleph. That a person should believe that God is intimately involved with everything in this world. That whatever happens in my life, God is involved with whatever happens in my life. If I'm having a difficulty in my life, it's God allowing it to be so. Statement number one. Statement number two. She is spiralo, that it become clarified to a person. That God's judgment is absolutely correct. To the most refined of levels. If God is making something happen in my life, there's a reason why something is happening in my life. I'm not going to necessarily understand it, but I absolutely accept that if this is happening, it's from God, and there's a reason why it's happening. Gimel. Hasagas kon. This maybe is the hardest one. Hasagas kon my David Rachman al Tav David. That whatever God does for me is for the good. Shiamin bilvavu for a person to believe in their heart. 
that whatever God does for me is fundamentally good. That the desire and the intent is specifically for the benefit of people. Whether or not I understand why this is good. I might never understand why it's good. So just to close, I guess if we were to boil this down to just a few statements, it would be that I guess our message here to reflect on is imagine if we could see life's difficulties as not, as first of all, being from God. That's the first thing. Not that God is hitting me. Not that God is punishing me. Not that God is expelling me. But that Hashem is tapping me on the shoulder. Trying to get my attention. I can't emphasize enough. That doesn't mean we always know that's what's happening. But it's a very real possibility. And that maybe I'm supposed to, it's an opportunity to message to me that I, I can do better. And maybe it's an opportunity that he just wants me to talk to him in a more meaningful way. And also to remember, as we've seen, this happened in the lives of the greatest of people, of the patriarchs and matriarchs. So it doesn't mean that God hates me. It doesn't mean I'm an evil person. It doesn't mean I'm a good for nothing. It actually means God is interested in me. That's what it means. But God is interested in all of us. But God is 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 trying to send us a message, maybe, maybe in some way. And the tefillah, of course, we daven to Hashem that things should get better. But the more we daven and the more we reflect, the more meaningful the tefillah can become. And to try when we daven, as we need to do, to not see it as this painful experience, here we go again, but to see it as maybe it, it's spiritual therapy. And hopefully our engaging in the spiritual therapy is a merit that whatever we're looking for should come should come so. Yeah. Um, again, difficult, difficult ideas. I don't think any of this is easy, but hopefully it's been helpful for me to reflect on these things. Hopefully it's been helpful for you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Any uh, any comments or Menasha? Yeah, so uh, I found a very interesting wording, and I have to Google and find a subject to confirm this piece. The Isabo Mil Hamad Mid Arts of Fan, it's hard to wear a stuff. Now, he's talking here more about the whole idea of sorrows. But the very first one is Zabo Mil Hamad Arts of Fan, and where most other places do Zabo La Mil Hamad, he says, hey, La Mil Hamad, you're going out to a war, you're doing a war to conquer the land. This seems to be. Specifically, which really is October 7th, when the, our enemies come to us in our land. And that's yeah. really. Uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, 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 my inclination will be to agree with you. Yeah, right. I was, I, I was very, uh, yeah, I was very moved when I saw that puzzle. I agree. Yeah. Thank you. Robert? Uh, one of the things that would constantly the angle of but at the same time, what exactly is supposed to be concentrated? Hula is the continuity. Yeah. And so when you're thinking Sean Essence, which is the most important, what is it other than looking at the word? What is it that we're concentrating? Yeah, thank you. That's such an important question. Thank you for raising it. On a, on a, we should certainly think about what the words were saying. and But I think sort of like to set the scene, so to say, we have the remarkable opportunity to speak to the master of the universe who's interested in, in hearing from me. And in that context, I'm saying whatever I'm saying. So if, I, if I'm in a bracha that's asking for things, I'm asking for things. If I'm in a bracha that's reflecting on the relationship that we have with God back from the patriarchs, I should, wow, how fortunate I am if it's the brach of modem, of thanks. Thank you, God, for all the good things in my life. But I think the setting is dealing with the most powerful being in the universe who's interested in me and who's listening. And then I'm just reading the script, but hopefully thinking about it. And obviously, depending on what's going on in my life, the words, different words resonate with me. 
how many of us, again, for, for a number of months, we did it here in Shoal of the Avinu Malkeinu Tfilos, how many of us found ourselves tremendously moved and connected to certain lines of the Avinu Malkeinu that for years we have just been zipping by every Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. There, I don't want to belabor the point, but I, I'm seeing nodding in the room. So depending on what's going on in our lives, different different things jump out at us in different ways. Did I, did I, did I, did I, yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Linda. But there are times when things are very tragic and very sudden that there is an issue of, of being mad at God. Yeah. And I'm totally that you're going to touch on that because all of this is good, but you have to be mad to me in contrast. There, and he's brought it up where it's okay to tell God. I don't like you now. I'm not happy with what you did to me or what you did to my family or whoever. And, and and that's part of that for me, part of the grieving process before you get to this point. That's all that's, that's, that's part of yeah. that is part of this, you know, where it fits into Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Linda. Thank you for raising this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I'm not going to do it the justice to Linda it, with which Linda expressed it, but basically there are times in a person's life that a person might might not yet be ready to be asking this of God and asking that of God, and rather they feel angry with God. And how is one supposed to approach that? Um, I, I, I think um, it's probably, I, I think actually, we're all different and it's it's probably best addressed on an individual level, but broadly speaking, but I think it's a very real point you're raising. Um, broadly speaking, I think the first step, I, I think the first step is to see it as something that is connected to God. And, 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 you know, if we sit there and say, well, this wasn't God, it's, it's going to, it's going to be very difficult to relate to things moving forward this 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 is also part of God's world. Um, and I think actually, regardless of the emotion, whatever the emotion one has, um yeah. i I think it's uh, I think the first step is to emotionally get to the point that one emotionally and intellectually, that one does see that this was also God. and and then, a person does daven, a person doesn't daven. Uh, everybody, everybody's different, and you, you know what I mean. I, I'm not trying to dodge the question. I, you know, um, um, I'll, I'll uh, again. I know this is a rerun for people, but thank God it doesn't have to do with my broken arm. Um, uh, when I was a high school, uh, when I was a high school rebbe, there was a boy who had really been through a lot in his life, in his relatively young life, had really been through a lot, and um, he would not. He would not say a word during davening, you know. He was he was required to be there, so he sat there and he sat down and he basically put his head down more. Maybe he sat up, but he his lips did not move in any way, shape, or form. And and whatever different schools approach it different ways. The 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 approach that we did when I was there was we let him be, you know. And and you know, I still remember. So he was he was in my shear. He was in my gemara shear, and we were talking about tefillah one day. And he, sorry, he was in my Gemara year. We talked about Tefillah one day. And um, boy, he was on the school baseball team. And he asked, um, is, it, is it wrong for me to daven to Hashem on the day of the game that it not rain? I said to him, that's just fine. That's just fine. His, his question was, is that disrespectful? I said, no, that's just fine because that's what's real for you. What what always so first of all I, I'm just using that as an illustration that I think the core of tefillah is to approach God in, 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 on on matters that are emotionally meaningful for me. What I find so striking is I don't think the boy could bring himself to daven. They should get a home run. Do you know what I mean? I think the boy experienced too much difficulty, and 
I think he was upset with God for too many things. Or not sure if he believed in God to daven for a home run. But to daven that, that it shouldn't rain, that he could wrap his head around. You know what I mean? So I just think we're all very different. And, and I think God wants us to connect to him. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it's a little bit of a hard, it's an interesting point, Robert. It's a little bit of, of a hard jump. I'll tell you why. Because let's say, as, as, as some people here I'm sure can attest, let's say the person is an onane over Shabbos. So the halachas, they do daven. So, so the real reason that the onain, the onain is the relative, the close relative that the person has passed and the funeral hasn't happened yet. The real reason the onain doesn't daven is because we assume the onain is wrapped up in so many things having to do with the needs of the deceased that the onain is exempt from. Him. So, you you see you, you see what I mean. So so like I said, so if the person it's the Shabbos, we tell the person they need to daven. So. It's a little bit, but it's an interesting thing to think about. Thank you for raising that. Stuart. When you're talking about a Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. I don't know if I said that. Yeah, thank you for fleshing that out. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Nancy? Thank you. Thank you. Someone else had a hand up. Uh, Judy. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly, timing is certainly part of God's divine presence, providence. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. That's certainly part of the certainly part of the picture. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. And thank you all for joining us today for this program, whether in person or over Zoom. Uh, please join us next month in person uh, for our annual Priestly House Kumsitz uh, on Saturday night, September 28th. We'll have music and refreshments, but it's meant to get us in the mode and the mood for the beginning davening before the Yom Narayim. So I hope you'll all be out there to join us for that. Uh, for those who want updates on upcoming Meaningful to Feel the programs, you can send an email, your email address to me at stuartrosenthal at yise.org. And if you've missed earlier presentations, you can watch them online at the Meaningful, Meaningful to Feel the Project channel on YouTube. And now refreshments are available. By the way, we brought them upstairs, so they're right outside the door here. We noticed that a lot of people didn't bother to go downstairs for earlier presentations to help yourself. So here, they're right there. Please join us and help yourself to something and have a nice nosh. Thank you again.